I'm Elisa Casas. Thanks for joining me on Gab with Elisa Profiles. Remember when you were a little girl and you had a hairbrush in front of the mirror? Mm, even better, remember when you would sing in the shower how good it sounded? Well, guess what? We have a young lady that we're going to profile today who sounds good, hairbrush or microphone, in the shower or on the stage. Our guest today on Gab with Elisa Profiles is Sarah Gray. Coming up in just a moment, we're going to talk to her a little bit about music, the music industry, how she got started, faith, family, friendship, and where she's headed. That's all coming up in just a moment, so kick back and join us. We'll be right back with Gab with Elisa Profiles. Being your best is all about how you feel inside and out. If you feel good, you look good. Hi, I'm Dawn Campbell. Join me on Metricast Channel 10 for Be Your Best. I'll show you creative ways to dress for success, give you quick health and fitness tips, and daily ideas for living the life you were meant to live. Be Your Best airs weekdays exclusively on Metricast Channel 10 and is brought to you by Fitz Auto Mall. Hi, this is James Laporte. Do you know what St. Mary's County is buzzing about? If you don't, then tune into Metricast Channel 10 to find out. The Buzz is a weekly entertainment program featuring artists, performers, and entertainers from the area. Find out where the hot spots for entertainment are this weekend. We've got the scoop on all the fun each week on The Buzz. The Buzz is brought to you on Metricast Channel 10 by Birch Propane. Efficient, environmentally friendly propane. Call for details, 301-373-2131. Welcome back to Gab with Elisa Profiles. Today we profile Sarah Gray. Sarah is an up and coming country artist from our wonderful community of Southern Maryland. Sarah, it is so nice to talk to you. I do have to let people know that I've known of you, kind of been associated with you for about three years. You've been coming into the studio at Metrocast Channel 10 and you've done a number of things, but it's been such a pleasure and joy to watch you as your career has progressed. Thank you so much. I love everyone here and I'm happy. Thank you guys for having me back. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about you and kind of set the stage and then we're going to back up and talk about history but talk a little bit about who you are um, where you are with your incredible music career well um, I guess it all started out when I was little my dad was a singer and was you know, had his own band and I've just grown up with singing ever since I was small um, and when I was three years old that was the first time that I've ever sang in public that's when it all started I was on a cruise ship and um, <laughs> there was a talent show and I sang a song from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and um, did like some silly dance moves and uh, I, I really I've just been singing ever since I, I don't remember me without singing okay you were three years old three years old and you got up and sang Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in yes. front of an entire cruise ship uh, yes an entire cruise ship and I told my parents um, we were going down, and they said, it's okay, Sarah, we're going to go sing. And I said, no, I don't want to do it. And they called my name when I got there, and I was like, okay, I'll do it. So they didn't bring the video camera. They didn't bring anything. So it's not on videotape, but it's something that I always talk about. And they said that I was just singing and dancing and having a great time. But I, I, I honestly, I don't remember me, remember me without singing. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about your family. You said your dad sang, and so music has really been a big part of your entire family life. Yes, yes, yes. My dad has been awesome um, and I mean and you know what I can't my mom too my mom I give her credit because she, she can't sing a lick but <laughs> but I can remember me singing her saying Sarah sing louder sing louder or even with the stage presence like the hand motions and everything like that she she's been such an awesome help with but both of my parents have just been completely supportive 100 percent just strong holds and just very amazing people. I'm very blessed to have both of them in my life. And I, I think that's really important and I really wanted to talk about that because I'm hoping for some of our viewers watching that they can learn about you because you're you're adorable. You're just <laughs> such a sweet and friendly presence when you come anywhere you go. I um, have had the pleasure of seeing you speak to a, a middle school group of girls and I loved how you spoke to each of the girls individually. You remembered names, you talked to them, and I know that when you're in a certain age of life it's really important to have somebody to look up to mm. and I, I think that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about getting to know you because I saw this whole group of girls flock around you. You had a smile and a minute and a picture and an autograph for each of these girls and I I think that comes from knowing inside not only are you a performer and a singer and you love that but you know who you are and what kind of a person you want to be yeah no definitely and I'm, I'm 
very thankful for the background that my parents have provided and the faith that they've given. And um, if anything, through all, through all of this singing, that would be my ultimate goal. If I could in any way help, help girls and help them to realize, hey, like, you can live God's way, you can do it God's way, mm -hmm. and it's still, you have this, you know, this awesome life that God's just going to lead you through. Um, mm -hmm. If I could just be any example, you know, any little example, that, that would be my ultimate goal for this. And, you know, just uh, talking to those girls was so awesome and such a cool experience. And I, I was just very thankful. They were very nice to me, so sweet. And um, if there's any way that I could bring anybody closer to the Lord, that would be, you know, the ultimate goal of everything. So. I, and, and I think, you know, there, there's something about every person that makes them unique and special. Um, and I think when you talked about being three years old and being brave enough to stand up and sing, you know, in front of a huge crowd of strangers, I think that's something that is a unique and a special gift that's inside of you. And you obviously have a sense of self-value, self-worth, self-confidence. How do you think that you can encourage girls, particularly young girls, to be able to find something like that within themselves? Well, you know, I think that, I actually had this experience over the weekend. I have a, a I went to my cousin's baby shower and there's a little girl there and she came up to me and she's um, in the second grade and she's like, I'm going to sing at my talent show on Monday and I'm so scared, I'm scared and all the other girls in my class aren't scared and um, I related to her because like, when I was three, it was e I think when you're that young, it, it doesn't really connect what you're doing maybe, sure. you know, you just get up there and do it. But I remember as I got older that, you know, you would get these butterflies or these feelings of, you know, fear or whatever. And I can remember being at dance recitals, I'm um, about to do like a so song and dance solos and things like that and being on the side of the stage with my dad and being like, hey dad, I'm scared and mm -hmm. him like, hey, it's okay, it's normal for you to feel this way. Let's say a prayer, and he would give it completely all over to God. And I was able to share that with the girl, um, the little girl in second grade who's doing the talent show. Actually, the talent show is today, so I was saying a prayer for her this morning. Um, but I was able to share that with her and tell her, hey, I was your age, I felt the same exact way. So, and just being able to relate to her, let her know, and let everyone know, hey, everyone feels this way. It's, mm -hmm. how, it's how you handle it, you know? You can either be overcome by that fear, or mm -hmm. you can overcome the fear itself. And the only way you can do that is if you, you, you just pray, you know? Right. And, and God will get you through that, and, and that's what I did. And that was the example that my parents were able to be for me. And um, if, you know, if I could share that with anybody, that would be, that would be cool, and, you know, to help them get through. Absolutely. Now, give them the rest of the story, because I know you're scared right before you get on stage and once you get started, but once you get on stage... Oh, so, yep, so we, my dad grabbed my hand, and we said a prayer, and, you know, you went out on the stage, and the first two, the music starts, the first two seconds, you forget all about it, you know? <laughs> you start right. singing, and you're having an awesome time, and, and God just takes over, and he, he did. He filled, filled you with a peace and a confidence. And, um, and I mean, I do, I do that every time before I go to sing. I think it's completely normal to feel, you know, to feel that, oh, I'm about to sing, and you kind of feel that excitement in your stomach, but there, I can't, there's not a time that before I sing that I don't pray. I'm always, always praying because, hey, I, I can't do this by myself. Like, hey, God, help me, and help me to do a great job on my voice, and help me to shine for you, and, and you know, I, I, I have to. <laughs> well, you know, I, I love that you've been so um, so vulnerable and so real about being nervous and scared to get up on stage and talk about that because I think that one thing um, that our society doesn't always do is doesn't really prepare girls and say, hey, you're going to have a whole bunch of emotions and they're going to be really strong in any given situation. They're going to be very strong emotions, but you step past some of them, whether it's fear or, or uh, being confused or what have you, you step past them. And if you have a strong faith, background to really rely on, then it makes such a difference. Mm. And I think just saying, hey, this is real and it's it's okay. Now let's take one more step. Yes, exactly. Okay. I 100% okay. agree. Good. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk about your music because you write as well as sing. And I yes. want to talk about that because I know there are a lot of people that are out there that say, how do you even start? How do you, how do, you do that? <laughs> All right, we'll do that in just a moment. We continue in just a moment with Gabby the Music Profiles with Sarah Gray. You call me baby for the first time. Leonardtown, a most convenient place for shopping, dining, or even just wandering. Leonardtown, a most entertaining place for things to do, sights to see, and fun for everyone. Leonardtown, a most relaxing place for a quick visit 
a lazy afternoon, or a long weekend. Watch Leonardtown, a most convenient place. A new program exclusively on Metrocast Channel 10, brought to you by Dan Burris' Old Town Insurance. We're driving in the Jeep, we got the top down To pull over, make me get out And now look around, yeah You could not know what you were looking for Trying to fill a void Just wanting something more Stays with you forever you said a thousand times You won't forget me ever Welcome back to Gab with the Lisa Profiles as we profile Sarah Gray, a wonderful up and coming country artist from this beautiful community we call Southern Maryland. Sarah, we talked in the first segment a little bit about your background, how your faith and your parents have really helped propel you to where you are. Let's talk a little bit about processes, if you will, because I think sometimes people see people that are bigger than life and they say, oh my gosh, they just became. Well, you know, it's a, a longer, harder road and it is a process. Now, you, your first singing engagement was on a cruise ship when you were three and mm -hmm. here you are, you know, a few years later. You've opened for Kelly Pickerel. You've been at the WMCQ Music Fest. You've been all around and really done some singing. So let's talk about the process. So if there's somebody out there saying, hey, maybe I'd like to do that someday, really kind of share with them you know what the process is is all about. I definitely think that you hit it the hit the nail on the head when you said people look at it and they're like, oh, you know, you think, oh, they just got there so easily, but you know, you don't see the late nights, right. the practicing, the you know, hours and hours that you spend all behind the scenes of things that you have to do. Um, so I mean, really, when we started this whole process. We literally just, um, I got a guitar player and we started just doing acoustic gigs, just him and I. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started at local restaurants and, and things like that and just really have tried to build a name for ourselves mm -hmm. and um, honestly just praying all the way for God to open up doors and it's just built, built from there. And I definitely, I do think that it's God just you know, I, I'm praying and trying to see where he wants sure. you know, to, to place me or to lead me. And, um, you know, as long as he'll continue to open up the doorways, I'm okay for the ride. <laughs> sure. You, not only do you sing, but you also write. And that, to me, is gold. That's gold in the music industry. If you can write your own music because you know what you want to convey and what you want to share and just um, what's inside of you that you want to um, bring forward in your music. So how mm -hmm. do you write? How do you get your inspiration? How does that go? Well, it's so funny. And I know I keep talking about God, but it's just the way that it works. Um, I I wanted to write and I, I would just write little like little things. I never really wrote full songs. Um, until I was about 16, but I started praying, and I was like, God, I really, because, you know, my sister, um, she plays, and she sings, too, and she would write these awesome songs. I'm like, man, she's writing such, her songs are so good, and I had written songs, but I just, I didn't love them like I loved her, so I started praying. I was like, you know, help, help me to write a song. Help me, you know, with this process, and they just started flowing out. Like, it, really? yep, yep, yep. I mean, not, I'm not saying instantaneously or anything like that, <laughs> right. but you got, you know, you, it just started coming. You got better and better and better, and it's just a process. I love songwriting, and I try to write every single day. Okay. And, you know, you hear, you're talking to somebody, you're having a conversation, and ideas pop in your mind. You're like, oh, that's cool that they said yeah. that, you know what I mean? Or, or you see from situations that people are living, your friends, mm -hmm. you know, you use them as inspirations, uh, your relationships your you know your relationships with your parents your relationship with God um, mm -hmm. situations you know you see your your friends or your your close church members things like that you see them lose people and there's so ma I mean a million things a day can inspire you mm -hmm. I mean I, I'm literally driving up to a, a red light and I'm like oh I had this cool idea like pop in my head so wow. you know this everything you just got to have your mind open and, and aware and and they just come, they just pop on in there. <laughs> that, that is incredible. If, if people listen to your music and they hear the songs that you've written, um, I know you have such a personal connection because I love the way that you talked about, um, you get inspired by the things that happen in your life and from what little I understand about writing music and what have you, that's what makes beautiful music is this story that comes from within. Mm -hmm. So if people hear your music and 
they walk away with an impression. What kind of an impression would you like for them to have of you and of your music? Um, I guess if any, if anything, I would just want them walking away feeling like, oh, hey, she f fully, you know, relies on God. And um, but it's not that I write every song about God or anything. That I write songs about, you know, first loves, about, you know, you're having your heart broken, about losing someone, Life. about being thankful for for your parents for loving you. For you know, I write about your sister. I mean, there's. There's a million things that I've written songs about, about, you know, waiting for that right person to come along in your life and, you know, you're sitting there and you're waiting for them to come. So um, I think that every song really will tell a different story, mm -hmm. but I hope in every song, whether I mention God or not, I hope that they could feel His Spirit in some of it. Oh, I love that. Um, what, what advice would you give to somebody that's considering the music industry as a career, whether considering singing, writing, or playing, or what have you? Um, really rounded advice, because I, I know that when you sing, you're under a tremendous amount of pressure because it is something that comes from within you, mm -hmm. and everybody's looking at you. What kind of advice would you give to somebody that's considering getting into the music industry? Number one, pray. <laughs> and just yeah. let him be in control. And um, number, the second thing would obviously be just be ready to work. Um, I mean, literally, I work a full-time job, and uh, I do singing, you know, I, I'm doing, trying to do singing full-time as well. So it's like I'm working two and a half jobs, and I, I feel like I do more with singing um, than I do with my full-time job. That's how much more time I spend. So I spend 40 hours a week at a full-time job, but I feel like I spend probably that plus more on singing, and I just, I work, 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 work. I'm, I mean, I'm constantly always doing something for singing, always trying, you know. Can, can we talk about that for just a sure. second, um, about your other job, because you're a full-time nurse. Uh -huh. yeah. um, your mom encouraged you to pursue that first, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes, she was telling me, hey, Sarah, like, I know you love to sing, and I know that you know this is what you want to do, but you need a backup plan. You need something mm -hmm. to fall back on, so you know you will be able to support yourself if that doesn't work. Which I do think was, you know, a, an awesome, an awesome, th an awesome idea and stability. You know, that sure. provides that. Um, so I was, I'm very thankful that I did that, and I do have a full-time job. I work for Children's Hospital, oh. so I definitely love that, and it's one of our, one of our outpatient centers um, where I work. So it's more like an office setting, which allows me to do more for singing, um, you know, because I'm not working on the shift work or anything like that. But yeah, very thankful for my mom. She, <laughs> she said, make sure you do this, and I said, okay. So we did that, and then we focused on the singing. I love that. It sounds like your parents really have given you such a foundation for dreaming. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is what is that famous saying, Casey Kasem? Keep your feet on the ground, Casey, but reach for the this, stars. Aww. And that is so I compelling. I swear, me and my mom were just talking about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. it is so compelling. And having him passed away just recently, mm -hmm. you know, I know on a lot of people's minds, but it's true. It sounds like that's what your parents have done for you. Yes. Keep your feet on the ground. Get a backup career, but reach for those stars with your singing. Yep. Well, I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some big, exciting things that are in the future. You've got a recently released CD, you've got some really wonderful things in the works, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We might even see if we can talk you into, I don't know, an impromptu Ninja Turtles rendition. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. We'll come back in just a moment as we profile Sarah Gray on Gabba the Lisa Profiles. Because here you got someone to hold you who's already studying. Being your best is all about how you feel inside and out. If you feel good, you look good. Hi, I'm Dawn Campbell. Join me on Metricast Channel 10 for Be Your Best. I'll show you creative ways to dress for success, give you quick health and fitness tips, and daily ideas for living the life you were meant to live. Be Your Best airs weekdays exclusively on Metricast Channel 10 and is brought to you by Fitz Auto Mall. Driving in your Jeep, we got the top down To pull over, make me get out And I look around, yeah You could not know what you were looking for Trying to fill a void Just wanting something more Stays with you forever you said a thousand times You won't forget me ever But you're someone new 
Hi, this is James Laporte. Do you know what St. Mary's County is buzzing about? If you don't, then tune into Metricast Channel 10 to find out. The Buzz is a weekly entertainment program featuring artists, performers, and entertainers from the area. Find out where the hot spots for entertainment are this weekend. We've got the scoop on all the fun each week on The Buzz. The Buzz is brought to you on Metricast Channel 10 by Birch Propane. Efficient, environmentally friendly propane. Call for details, 301-373-2131. You're watching Gab with Elisa Profiles as we profile Sarah Gray, an up-and-coming country music sensation from Southern Maryland with a heart as big as a community, a faith, and a family that really have just supported her. And if you're considering getting into the music business at any point, whether it's writing or singing, what have you, this has been such a great eye-opening conversation. I've loved talking to you, and I think you probably have inspired a lot of people. Oh, thank you. Um, talking about the reality, one thing that me we mentioned is how sometimes people see you and they think, wow, it happened for you, and it's just kind of a snapshot that they see of your life, just that, that moment where really you have a whole documentary of your life, mm -hmm. of the things that you've done, the hard work you've put in. But wow, do you have some really neat benchmarks in your documentary because you've opened up for some big names. You've had some great opportunities. Yes, yes, we've done lots, lots of stuff to be thankful for. Um, and I mean, even if, even if it doesn't happen and this is all that it is, it's still something that's so, just so much to be thankful for. I mean, when I was younger, we did dance competitions, singing competitions, sure. we did all that type of stuff. Um, and then we started with the national anthem for the Capitals, for the Washington Nationals. And then, you know, really, like you said, it started back when I was three years old singing on a cruise ship and we started dancing and then we started, I mean, just singing everywhere. So that's how long this it's been building, you know? Right, right. It's been so a you, while. It's been a while. Um, you've opened for Kelly Pickerel. What are some yeah, of the other Kelly big... Kelly Pickler. Pickler. Oh, <laughs> Kelly, I'm so sorry. I know Kelly Pickler. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the other big things that you've done? Um, so we've done Kelly Pickler. We've done Miranda Lambert. We've done Toby Keith. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, those were all on the side stages at mm -hmm. Jiffy Lube Live in the VIP lounge. Um, we've also done the WMCQ Fest, Luke Bryan. Um, we were scheduled for the Zach Brown Band, but that was rained out. Aww. That would have been fun, though. Um, and then we I, recently we got to do NASCAR. How um, was that? That was it was fab. I, I I told someone else before that it was such a cool experience. Really, and it was a beautiful day, and the sky was just immaculate above you, and you're just standing there like little old you in the middle of this big huge track, and there's you know thousands of people around you and it's just dead silence and it, it was one of the coolest experiences I've seriously, ever had singing. Seriously, what goes through your mind at that moment? I really, I, I want the truth from an artist when you're in the middle of this magical moment. What's going through your mind? Honestly, so like I told you before, I, I'm praying, like I'm praying up to the point where, you know, right before I start singing, then I'm, all, I'm just thinking of my, my starting note. <laughs> I'm like that's okay. I'm just saying a prayer, and I'm thinking of a certain note, and then I sing. <laughs> oh, that is excellent. You have some big things coming up too. Yep, yep. We have um, a lot of shows coming up that will be a lot of fun and um, something big. I haven't announced that all yet, but I, I'll tell you first. <laughs> I love getting the scoop. Um, we're going to be on the side stage for Brad Paisley coming up in, in the future. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, so that should be a lot of fun, and he's amazing, so we're really excited about that. Please tell me, you don't have to demonstrate, but please tell me you have a happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of happy dances. <laughs> oh my gosh, Brad Paisley, that's amazing. Okay, well let me ask you another question. If you could sing with someone, here now, living or dead, if you could pick just one person or one band that would be your dream ultimate to sing with, who would it be? That is so easy, Steven Tyler. I love you, Steven Tyler. <laughs> what? <laughs> not kidding. Really? Not kidding, I'm not kidding at all. I, lo I, I love him, literally, I, I used to listen, just listen to Aerosmith, I mean, okay. constantly. I, you know, I almost feel like, I mean, well, growing up, you listened to Paul Abdul, Mariah Carey. Me and my dad used to have like singing competitions in the car, like who can hold your, who can hold the note the longest. Like <laughs> and he'd always let me win. Okay, 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 good. good <laughs> he was good. probably just trying to encourage me. He, got, he probably could have beat me, but, <laughs> but, um, but Aerosmith. I mean, I've been singing his songs 
I, I feel like he's probably helped me learn how to sing. You know what I mean? Because he's got such an um, amazing range. So him, hands down. If I could sing with anybody, it would be him. And is there a specific song? Any of them. Anything with Stephen? I don't care. Really. <laughs> that is incredible. I, I think I expected a lot of things. I'm not really sure I expected that <laughs> answer. That's amazing. Okay, well, b before we wrap up, I wanted to talk a little bit more because it was just such a fun story about your first time singing because we really would like to encourage you that take the opportunities that come before you, even if you're only three years old. Yes. You sang on the cruise ship for your very first time. And you have a really funny family story about that. So uh, they're calling my name up there and uh, to you know come on the stage. And my grandma was with us on this cruise ship. She came with us. And obviously, I don't remember this, but my parents tell the story. My grandma like starts like freaking out. And she's like, oh god, oh god. And she like starts sinking down. And she's like literally like going underneath the table. Because you're going to get up and sing, and she gonna, thinks you're going to be embarrassing. She thinks I'm going to embarrass her. <laughs> Hi, grandma. And, uh, <laughs> So then they said that she's like, you know, like hiding and like, oh my God. And I start to sing and then she's like, oh yeah. She's that's like, my granddaughter. That's my granddaughter. <laughs> really? <laughs> then she wants to claim me, thanks grandma. Love ya. <laughs> okay, you know, we got to do it. it as, as a tribute to your grandma who you just told on on television. <laughs> Love you grandma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give us, give us a, a quick Ninja Turtles highlight. Of the Ninja Turtles song, um, it was like, you gotta fight to be free. You gotta fight for what is right. See, that's amazing because all that I remember is Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. <laughs> Which is probably why you're in the music industry and I am not. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. Um, Sarah, it's been so wonderful to talk to you and, and to really kind of learn a little bit about who you are, um, where you come from, what you encourage people to be, and really get a real picture of what is going on in the music industry. Well, I thank you guys for having me. This has been a blast. And uh, like I said, I love everyone here. They're so nice and I'm just very thankful. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Steven Tyler, if you're watching, Sarah Gray's on Facebook. <laughs> 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 That's going to do it for this edition of Gab with the Lisa Profiles. We hope you've enjoyed the program. We invite you to follow Sarah. She's got a wonderful Facebook page. Her music is out, and it is phenomenal. A terrific young lady making inroads and making Southern Maryland look great. That's going to do it for Gab with the Lisa Profiles. We'll see you next time. I'm Elisa Casas.